but you're in our hearts and we know God sees you where you are. Can I get an amen? Because this is the special weekend. Woo! Easter weekend. You guys, we are so excited about it. We want you to mark your calendars for Friday, Good Friday at 7 p.m. We are going to have Jesus Not Just Stories production. And I tell you, you want to invite some friends and family because this is an opportunity for us to lead people to Jesus. Bring them. People want to be invited. People are looking for something to do on Easter morning. And guess what? We've got it. At 1030, we are going to have once again a reprise of Jesus, not just stories. And the music, the acting, the dancing, the celebration of what God has done for us. Amen? What he's done for us. So we just want to encourage you to bring a friend, bring, bring grandma and grandpa, bring uh, somebody from work. Let's do what God's called us to do, to go and make disciples. Amen? We got that all spread out for you. All you have to do is invite someone. And so we want you to know that Jesus sees you, and he's got a plan for you, and he loves you dearly. And we are going to just get in the bask of that today. Can we raise our hands? Can we just tell Jesus how much we love him? He's a mighty God. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for you. We thank you for the blood. We thank you, Jesus, in this wonderful, wonderful Sunday morning. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant.
came on me just unusual faith not a fake faith not a hopeful faith not a wishing faith not a lucky faith but with faith all things are possible it was interesting I'm going there I have this thing just hit me faith 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 mountains are moved by faith and, and then my microphone didn't work and I, I said to myself we'll try that again everybody all the distractions I said I am going to declare faith with or without a microphone God can do it few of you have come today you're not bad there's no shame there's no guilt but they're just things that just are eating you up they're just eating you up they they talk to you they talk you out of things. And then they always tell you this. Well, you shouldn't have done that. That's why you're getting this. How many get that condemnation? You shouldn't have done that. I want to let you know if God was mad at you, you wouldn't be here today. We'll try that again. You wouldn't be here today. We'd be planning your funeral and embell embellishing your life or... You'd be in the morgue. But since you're here and you're alive, God hasn't forgot about you. He hasn't forgot about you. Hallelujah. When I first met you, there was a season of great grief in your life. It was disappointment and betrayal. You didn't do anything wrong but betrayal. It was like a start over. God has been so good to you. But I want to just declare to you right now, what you've seen is a down payment of his miraculous intervention. There will be, there will be favors that you never imagined come on your life. And you will cry, not with the tears of yesterday, but with the tears of the joy of the Lord. You said in your heart, this is good enough. My husband is great. My son is great. Uh, I love my church. It's, but God is greater than this. God is greater than what you think is great. God is greater than what you think is great. God is greater. The most attractive couple in the church, I get to vote. Charisma and this thing you found, I don't know, he is the most, he just looks like a movie star. I want some of the men that don't look overly attractive to meet him after the service. Peter, can you help me on that? Put a committee together. Can you do that? Put a committee together. But, but, there is going to be, just come here for a second, just come here for a moment. It's, it's really interesting. You, you have a, a, a better inheritance. You didn't always appreciate your childhood. Come here. You didn't always appreciate the rules of your father. You, you, didn't, you didn't appreciate what you felt like he would major on minors. And you felt tied up, might just get away from this. But I want to let you know that it's your inheritance. I met Jewish people, your dad saved their lives. Regardless how he does it, the mannerism he does it, the speech he does it, the non-negotiating with him, you know what I'm talking about, he does it. Your dad saved their lives. Saved their lives. And I met people who didn't go to your father's church, but their pastor looked to your dad when they wanted to give up. You have an inheritance, you're a one and only, you're a wonderful woman. You're a handful for him. 
you're a handful. No, you are. You're a handful for him. Because you're not going to buy into this brainless submission stuff. It ain't going to happen. If you figure that out, it ain't going to happen. You're just like, whatever, dude. Whatever. I'm an independent contractor, all right? But I, I want to just let you know, when God visits a family, he visits the whole family. And uh, I have some natural knowledge a little bit. Anybody in your family that tries to not serve God, they'll be the most miserable people on the planet. Just trust me, and nothing will work. But the heart's desire, what you want to do, your dad's a, pr a prideful man. It's the thing that kept him alive. When we, I think we gave him $2,700 a week ago, and it half kills him to feel like he's begging. He's not begging. It's our honor. It's our honor. This is what we do. You know, so it's not like all oh, we're giving your dad because we gave to Israel. We gave to Taiwan. We gave to the Philippines. So you, your dad's not the only one. This is what we do here. But I just have an unction. Uh, I heard you're one of the hardest workers there are in British Columbia. This man knows how to really, really work. He works like nobody else. And um, I just feel like the two of you don't settle for what's going on. Don't settle for what's going on. Don't settle where your income is. Don't settle for where you work. Listen to me. Don't settle for what's going on and what's not happening. That God has big, 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 big things for you. And within five years, whatever your dad needs, I, do you want me just to go off today? You sure? You'll send the money to buy him a new church. I just feel like God is going to prosper you. I feel it. It's going to take hard work. And look me in the face. You're going to have to be connected, listen to me closely, to me. I'm not McDonald's Happy Meal. I'm not a drive through It's not choose a church. Listen to me closely. It's not, it doesn't work that way. There's an anointing somewhere for you, and it'll connect. I know you draw, drive a long ways, but I just want to let you know it. After you drive home today, you'll go, man, it's worth it to hear him preach. Well, this is not humble day. All right. It's, worth it. it's a connection. It's a divine connection. And I don't know why, but I am connected to Jehovah Jireh. I've raised up numerous business people. It just, I just have unusual faith. A little story for me, what took place, my dad gave me a million dollar piece of property and then he changed his mind and I didn't do anything wrong he just said I'm a little older and son I'm just gonna keep it And I said absolutely dad and the Lord said because my attitude was good he would use me to raise millions and millions of dollars for the kingdom of God I just kept my spirit right loved my dad honored my dad even when I sang at his funeral I sang on key <laughs> you know I just honored my dad from the heart and I love my dad, I respect my dad. My dad brought class to me and respect and, and how to carry myself. I just love my dad. And he also put in me, money's no big a deal. It's, it's not a big deal. And I, I just feel like God is gonna open doors. Listen to me, you're not too tired and it's not too much. There's gonna be three, four, five, six, seven things going on all at once, and God will begin to bless every one of them. And then what you'll do, God will give you discernment. You'll come in agreement with your husband. You'll put someone in that position, and they'll do the work and make money for you. Just hear me, here's how it works. This is how it works. You know, I look really good. I'm gonna look really good next Sunday. No, trust me, I'm gonna look good. But I didn't have anything to do with it. It was the great ushers, it was the great deacons, it was the great elders, it was the great trustees, it was the great staff, it was the great singers, it was the great production people, it was all the people. But I'm more like a bad brother. Next Sunday, yeah, I'm in, I, I'm in charge. I, I'm going to look so sharp. I look good on television. Come on, somebody. We're going to be around the world. But what, what am I doing? I'm just simply releasing it. And it's happening. Just, just follow this picture for a second I feel deep in my heart no devil in hell can stop you too God divinely brought you together and I laugh and I'm funny you know I'm serious hallelujah no devil in hell listen to me no excuses and here's what religious people are gonna tell you well you just moved to Canada to make money so So, you didn't meet him on Hastings Street. 
There was physical, spiritual, natural things that you said, I love this man. Hallelujah. I want the elders to quickly come. I want a spirit of only faith. Mr. Chairman, your lovely wife, come. The Chans are going to be elders here real soon. They're going to be elders in the house real soon. And Robert, you know I'm so fun. You know I'm funny right now. It'll be Cynthia and Robert as the elders. Somebody wake up in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we're going to lay hands on you. Pastor Jody Ann, come and join me right now. Pastor Kay Gordon, come and join me right now. And I'm going to ask Pastor Kay, you're going to be incredible. God's going to raise you from the loins of this church. How, how important has money been in the Arctic? You wouldn't have got it done without it, right? It was really important to business people. Hallelujah. God's going to raise you up. We're going to declare protection on you right now. That there will be great jealousy against you. And they will lie about your husband and they'll lie about you. You hear the truth today. And they'll say hideous things about you. Pay no attention. For there is an assignment on this earth that God has chosen the two of you. You didn't come together by luck or chance. But you came in the will of God. You can't do it without her. She can't do it without you. The hand of God from this day forward is mightily upon you. And you shall know Jehovah Jireh. It will be the Lord himself provided. There will be a situation you don't have the down payment, but God will bring it. And your character, your integrity, will cause people in high places to give you an opportunity you didn't earn. And what would take a couple 25 years over the next five years, someone yell at me, say it. Hallelujah. If you walk humbly before the Lord, you stay planted in the house of God, you put God first, God will give you more than you ever even imagined. I don't know anything about your family, but there's, a, there's some giftings in your family, but things haven't turned out. I'm hearing the Lord say, they will turn out for you. Listen to me. They will turn out for you. What should have been good became bad. It'll turn out for good for you. I declare the hand of God will protect you and your steps. And in the nighttime, the Lord will speak to the two of you. If he has a check on anything about partnering with someone, don't do it. If she has a check on heart about anyone, she just doesn't know why. Don't do it. Your connections will determine your future. All the sewer pipes and the plumbing and this, the houses in a major part of Seattle, they're made out of clay and they're crumbling now. They can't make it any longer. They have to be all replaced. We can't afford that. There can't be improper plumbing in your life. I lay hands on you. I ask the Lord to bless you. I ask the Lord to have you think with eyes of hope, eyes of faith, eyes that says there's nothing too difficult for the Lord. I declare over your heart there will be humility. From this day forward, honor your Father. You don't have to live there. You don't have to go where He wants. But just honor Him in your heart. I see God using the two of you. I see the hand of the Lord upon you. I see seasons where he'll discipline you, chastise you, he'll rebuke you. He'll tell you, stop this and don't do this and quit this attitude and stop talking like this. And it won't be unto death, it'll be unto life. The Lord will do it. And keep in mind, in the dungeon is the place where Joseph met the cupbearer. In the dungeon was the place of promotion. The dungeon was a place where it set him up for the ring, the robe, and the chain. And I declare that in the dungeons of just the drudgery of life, I declare over your life right now, church, pray. I pray for a chain. I pray for a ring. I pray for the robe. I pray that God would clothe you, bless you, touch you, use you. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. You've hand-chosen this couple. And they shall bring glory to your name. 
Father, I pray that they would hear every word of the prophetic, they would analyze it, discern it, and then they'd see the outcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for people you have impossible situations. I want you to put your hands up right now. They're just situations that are just impossible. Hallelujah. Let me see your hands. Would you make your way here? I just want to come in faith with you. Quickly come. Quickly. If your hand is up, quickly come. Move out. That means when I say quick, it means quick. Come. I want you to come and join me. Just have a circle with me right now. Impossible situations. Impossible situations. Hallelujah. Lorna, I want you to sing. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, Jesus, yes. Jesus. I can face Oh God, hallelujah. God loves you. God loves you. impossible without faith you must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those of us that diligently seek him God's gonna reward you I want to just say over you right now God's not mad at you every one of us including your pastor is a sinner I miss God I said things I shouldn't have said I've responded like I shouldn't respond but nothing but the blood of Jesus over my life God doesn't see my failure he sees my faith and I want to look you in the eyes right now and I want to let you know I have faith today God has put there's a gift of faith we God to put on a person and on a church it's a gift of faith and that gift of faith is on me right now it's on me this thing that's too big too difficult too challenging I want to let you know you've made it bigger than God I want to say this to you God is bigger God love God is bigger God is bigger hallelujah you shall not be abandoned and thrown away your life shall not be because you've seen it in family members something happened to them and they never recovered you will did you hear this you will you will Mama, God just hears your prayers, all your prayers, hallelujah, hallelujah. He just hears your prayers, hallelujah. He has mercy, mercy, mercy. You're a house builder, you're a house builder. Because you built this house, God's gonna build your house. You hear me right now, he'll reward you, he'll reward you. I wanna say it over every person here. You got that dream in you, you got that dream in you? I gave you a little instruction, you better do what I say. What are you gonna do on Sunday? Yeah, be here on Sunday, come on baby, hallelujah. You can't make money on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Right now, you just need to go to a food bank. Hallelujah. Faith. 
Faith. Faith. You girls have just been seeking God, crying out to God. I want to let you know He's heard you. Now here's where we're going to pray in faith. Lift your hands with me. Lift your hands with me in faith. Just lift your hands. Come on. His hands lifted is surrender. No wrath and no malice. It's just surrender to God. And today we surrender to you. And Father, we'll glorify you. In advance, we thank you. We thank you that you've heard us. We thank you in the name of Jesus. You are speaking to people, situations, and kings on our behalf. And I thank you right now that there will be brand new tears and a brand new dance. And the people will say, look what the Lord has done. How good God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray right now in faith. These needs in faith. We speak faith. We think faith. We declare faith. We expect faith to be answered right now. Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to pray for some of you. I pray for wisdom. God's going to do it, but you need the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. You need the timing of God. Hallelujah. I pray for wisdom and timing to be on your life. It's not, it's not going to happen. It is going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unusual faith. I want to pray for people who are sick in your body. Lift your hands in the congregation. Just been sick in your body. God, do miracles. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of healing. You're the God of deliverance right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just touch people. Just stay in this for another moment, please. And those of you who've got into situations, we all have, and you need a supernatural deliverance to God intervene, put your hand up right now. I don't care where you're at. Father, whatever situation, you're the God of the fire. You're the God of the well. You're the God of the stone. And you can get us out. We just thank you, Father. We bless you. And I declare a spirit of deliverance to come upon people right now. Spirit of deliverance. You shall not live in Egypt. You shall not be bound by the demonic forces. But you shall be released by the power of God. Hallelujah. Not only that, you'll plunder the Egyptians. What God intended you to have, you shall have in the name of the Lord. We thank you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all through the church and at the altar, I want you to tell two or three people, say, I believe with you. Come on, everybody. Do it all through the church. I believe with you. I believe with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Give the Lord a hand clap today in the house of the Lord. How many are grateful you got out of jail in time for church today? Are you grateful for that? Thank you. It's handy to have a microphone, but how many know when you're a loud mouth, you don't need it? Hallelujah. As the word of the Lord's going to come out of this house. I've got a real word for you today. How many are excited about it? I said, I got a real word today. How many are excited about it? I bragged about you. I need, I'll preach in a moment, but I need somebody to help me out today and bring that word out of me and say, preach it, white boy. I need somebody who's not Caucasian to stand up and say, preach it, white boy. Hallelujah. Preach it. Bring it. Bring the word of God today. Hallelujah. Don't worry about my feelings. Don't worry about my flesh. Don't worry about my unbelief. Don't worry about my situation. Just bring the word of God today. Woo. Even in Israel, they stood up. Shalom lakum, white boy. Hallelujah. Be seated. Ushers, hand everybody an envelope. I'm going I'm to tell you something that's going to spin your head a little bit. It's going to make you have to get rid of your vertigo. And understand how God set things in motion. Matthew chapter 13, verse 12. The haves 
we'll have more. How many know that God is not a communist? Well, pastor, I, I came from a poor family. Find a new one. My daughters are smart enough. They don't care how ugly these men were. If these men had some real money, they're going to take their good looks from their mother and get themselves a man. My youngest daughter said this, my man's going to have real money. And if he's ugly, plastic surgery. Here's what the Bible says. Listen to me. There's haves and have-nots. One of my deacons said to me, I said, why'd you move here from the Philippines? He said this, because I like to eat. There are haves and have-nots. Better hear this. The haves will be given more. The have-nots, what they have, will be given to the haves. That doesn't seem very fair. It's the way it is. How many know a lot of things in the Word of God, God doesn't ask our opinion? He says this. He said, there's haves and haves-nots. Look it. If you've got one shirt, iron it. If you got one tooth left, scrub it. Carry yourself as a half. If you got a car you don't like, wash it. Vacuum it. Change the oil. There's haves and haves nots. Some people have a poverty spirit because they want a handout. Other people want to hand up. Here's what the Bible says. There's haves and have-nots. You better hear this. Those who have will be given what? More. Those who have not, what they have will be taken away and given to the haves. A have isn't the possession you have. A have is the spirit you carry. Look at Went to Nordstrom's. Needed money. I knew to go into ministry, I couldn't have any debt. And Jody Ann and I were going to get engaged, and I knew that a ring from the Walmart gum machine wouldn't work with her. So I'd go to Nordstrom's. I sold shoes. I've been in souls a long time. And I would pray. Multiplication. My mom and dad were divorced, but all they did on the phone is yell and scream at each other about money. You have a son too. You don't give me money. That's all he did is fought and yelled. My mom would use mild swear words at my dad. And then I went to see my grandpa. He lived in Nebraska. I found out that he owned five car dealerships. He owned 10 hotels. And here's what I said to myself. That's what I'm a part of. I'll try it again. That's what I'm a part of. I'm not a part of this fighting over $50 because I'm a have and not a have not. 1973, my grandfather picked me up in a Lincoln town car. Some would say Jesus. It was white with red interior, but here's what was interesting about it. It had a telephone in it. And I said to myself, that's what I'm a part of. Even though I lived in a state of confusion financially, I didn't let the confusion become me. And I saw the car dealerships. I saw all the things. He owned 80 trucks that delivered oil. He owned this and owned that. And he carried himself in such a way. I said to myself, that's what I'm a part of. 
I got that in my mind, I got that in my spirit when I was a young, young man. I was 17 years old and I said, I am not a part of fighting over $50. I'm a part of see the money, honey. See, there's haves and have nots. I could have because my parents were fighting over $50, $100, yelling and cuss, cursing. I could have said, that's what I'm a part of. If you came from poverty, you came from lack, you came from, just say, I'm not a part of that. Say it out loud, I'm not a part of that. I'm a part of Jehovah Jireh. Then he owns the cattle on every hill. I'm the part of the God who says, I'll open the windows of heaven. If you just catch this a little bit, just stand up with me. I, I'm a part of the God who'll meet all my needs according as riches and glory. Hallelujah. I want to let you know if you're in real estate, listen to me. And, and there, oh, there's not enough houses. There's one house for sale and you're going to sell it. Huh? No, you're going to sell it. Well, pastor, things aren't moving. Yours is going to move. Theirs might not, but yours will. Yours will sell. Yours will open up. Favor will pastor. I don't have money for a house. God does. My son listened to me. He's 18 years old. He listened to me. He moved out of the house at 18 years old. Thank you, Jesus. And he bought a house. And he had five of his friends live in it. He said, Dad, you know what my mortgage is? I said, huh, nothing. I said, what, are you, what are you talking about, son? I found five fools. We'll try it again. I found five fools. And they pay my whole mortgage, 18 years old. Whole mortgage. And money left over. I said, where'd you get that? Huh? I wish it was legal, you would have got that at 13. But it's a spirit you begin to carry. You're haves and have nots. Oh, Pastor, I just want to share with you just one thing. You know, it is so expensive in Vancouver. Oh, then move to hope and be hopeless. What does that have to do with it? I'm pastoring. Pastor Iverson said to me, he said, put three zeros behind it. Huh? Just put three zeros behind it. What, what are you talking? Just put zeros behind it, Vince. What, 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 just put zero. It won't change it. Just in your mind, put some zeros behind it. I went, wow. Put some zeros behind it. Hallelujah. And I did it. And our giving was 40000 that year. The next year, it was 800000 Because my spirit, I put zeros behind things. No, those of you that God has been good to you, he's blessed you, put your hand up, hallelujah. It shouldn't have happened, baby. It shouldn't have happened, hallelujah. Look at somebody and just say, it was not because of your good looks. Come on, somebody, tell them right now. Some of you are close to people. Tell them right, it wasn't because your IQ. It, wasn't, it was because of God, hallelujah. There's haves and haves nots. A.P. Simon was my good buddy. Loved A.P. Simon. A.P. Simon came from India. He knew one word. How many want to hear the word he knew? Goody, goody. He didn't know anything. Goody, goody. He had $27 in his pocket. His parents were godly people. Twenty years later, he shows up in my office. A.P. Simon. A.P. Simon owned the driving range for the golf course. Did you hear what I said? He said, Pastor, when you drive by it, Say hallelujah. Every ball goes in the air, I make 15 cents. They're just shooting in there, 15, 30, a dollar, two dollar, ten dollar, all day long, just in the air. He said, I keep it open 24 7. There's balls. He went door to door, didn't know English, but he knew God. In New York, and sold Kirby vacuums. Couldn't speak any English. He sold so many vacuums. He sucked people up for their money. I want to tell you that right now. He made, sold so many vacuums, they made him the chairman of all of that region. And everybody else that couldn't speak English that went to the houses, he got a cut. He came from a have-not, but he refused to be a have-not.
because he met someone who's a have. His name is Jehovah Jireh. I want to put this over the whole church right now. You bring your tithe to the house of God. God is held accountable according to what he says to open the floodgates of your life. Just hold it up in faith, Father, all through the house. I pray for unusual faith on the people. And I thank you. We've got a whole bunch of haves. We're not the have-nots. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's give to the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to belabor this. I just want to take a moment, just a moment. Ushers, would you, could I have your attention, all the ushers? Just look at me for a second. All the ushers. Resurrection seed envelopes. If someone doesn't have one, they put their hand up, just hand it to them real quick. I'm going to just take a moment. I will not be, belabor this. Good Friday and on Easter morning, the church is going to plant a seed. I want to take you to Genesis 22, 12. Genesis chapter 22, 12. God said to Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac. Now listen, listen to this theologically. God didn't say he'd have a son. He said he'd be a father to the nations. At this time, he was only a father to Isaac. And God called unto him to do something, to sow his son in faith. Isaac most likely wasn't a little boy. He, he said to his father, where, where, where's the offering? And his dad said, the Lord himself will provide. He took his son because the fulfillment of what God said in his life hadn't happened yet. He had a son, but what was the real promise? To be a father to the nations. He was a father to Isaac, but he wasn't a father to the nations. So he took his son, his miracle son, and went to sacrifice him. And the angel of the Lord stopped him. And here's what it says. Look at the scripture. It says, now I know. This is what God said. Now I know. Now I know. I know the revelation of who Abraham was in his faith in God to fulfill what he said, a father to the nations. God has to say to us, now I know, Vince. Now I know. Jody Ann and I, over the last 20 years, every year we sow at Easter a seed of faith. And we name it. We name it. Whatever it is, and God has said to us over and over, now I know. Over and over. We've got miracle churches. We've got buildings. We got our kids married to the right person. Because we would take a seed every resurrection in faith. And it was substantial. And we'd say, God, we're believing you for this. We'd sow that seed. And I'm going to tell you what happened. God has done the impossible over and over and over. We're going to include the whole family. I'm going to ask you to come Good Friday, Easter, and I want you to take a substantial seed. But don't be ambiguous about it. Don't say God knows. Say, God, this is what I'm believing you for. I'm believing for this, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a lot of, of new family members come, so I'm not going to belabor this on Easter. We're just going to take it. I'm not going to belabor it. We're going to just take it. Stand with me today. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Because you're an usher, you're in the choir, because you give, you serve, that's not why you're going to heaven. The only reason and the only way someone can go to heaven is because of the blood of of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is your path to heaven. 
One of our elders in our church gave me a pass to go to a Seattle Supersonic game, and it was courtside. My favorite elder. And we went to, to the game, and they had VIP parking because I had a very unique pass. I came in, they saw it. It had a rare around my neck, this badge, and they wave at each other. All the oh, bring him here, bring him here, bring him here. And her. And they brought us down to courtside. Then all the concierge and everybody began to, do you want this, you want this, you want this, you want this? You had unlimited food. I've never eaten popcorn again because I had a special pass. That pass gave me parking, that pass gave me courtside, and that pass gave me all any food I want. Your pass is the blood. You won't be in heaven, listen to me closely, because you go to glad tidings nine out of 10 weeks. You won't go to heaven because you come on Wednesday night. You won't go to heaven because you're a trustee. I won't go to heaven because I preach around the world. The only reason that I'm going to heaven is because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth forgives me of all my sins. Go ahead and be seated. Let me go through this with you. I won't belabor it. Thank you, worship team. First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 19, it says this, the precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. Many of you know there are shortages in Canada and the U.S. on blood. Great shortage. And then they have to be careful, not careless, so the blood's not tainted. Because what's in the blood will determine the person who's a recipient's health. The blood, the precious blood of Jesus is the only reason that you'll be in heaven. It won't be because of anything you've done. What we do is a response to the blood. What we do is a response to our forgiveness. But it's the precious, say the word precious. It's the precious blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Whatever ritual, whatever thought patterns you have, I want to declare to you right now, if Jesus is not your Lord and you've not asked for his cleansing blood to forgive you, you will not go to heaven. I don't care how good you are. I don't care what grandma said. I want to say this to you. You will not be in heaven. That the precious blood of Jesus, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. The only way you can be forgiven is by the shedding of the blood of Jesus. Here are some components in this precious blood. Number one, it's a big word, but I'll explain it to you. It's found in Ephesians 1, 7, redemption. Redemption is taking something that was stolen or lost and buying it back. Redemption means God bought you back. That you were bought and purchased by sin and the demonic realms owned you. And God such, saw such value in you, he took his only begotten son and shed the blood of his innocent son on my behalf and your behalf. So the redemption means this, God purchased you, the good, the bad, the ugly. He purchased everything about you. He owned you, bought you with his precious blood. Through the blood, you have forgiveness of sin. It says in the word redemption, saved from sin, air, evil. Clearing all debt, it's called the great exchange. You take your sin, your most evil private moments, you walk to God and God says, I take your sin, 
I take what you've done that's evil upon myself in exchange for my forgiveness. Someone say hallelujah. It's the great exchange. You'll see typology of this all through the Old Testament. When the harlot said when her house was being saved, said this, we give you our life, you give us your protection. The blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he gives his life for you. You have a sentence of eternal damnation. Pulpits are afraid to preach there is a literal hell and no one will be in heaven without the blood of Jesus. Now I want to let you know there's going to be some real stinkers in heaven. I want to let you know there's going to be some characters in heaven. I want to let you know some, we'll look at some people and go, you've got to be kidding. How do you? Because we think somehow we got there because of our good work. We only get there because of his great work on the cross. And the blood of Jesus, let me tell you a little about Judgment Day so you understand it. The only reason you'll be there, and I'll be there, is because of the blood of Jesus. That's it. But there will be a reward day. Now, for the unbeliever, there will be a judgment day of all the things that they've done wrong. But how many are thankful for editing in heaven? They're going to take, and some of your flicks would have been years. You did this, you did this, you did this. But what will happen is, on the judgment day, Jesus will stand over every sin you've ever committed and said, Father, Father, look at my hands. Look at my side, look at my feet. And he will stand on your behalf. My son and a couple of the gang put a guy in prison. He was an Aryan nation dude, my favorite kind of people. And he broke out of jail. They somehow had a snitch. And when you take someone who's in jail or prison and you bring them to the hospital, you don't tell anybody where you're going. But some insider did. And so this last week, this person broke loose with another guy that killed two people. They're racing the car, and they're going to the town, my son told me, where him and his team convicted the guy. Wonderful job, isn't it? I said, how are you, son? He said, oh, I have no problems at all, Dad. I'm an American. You're in Canada. He said, you should see my arsenal. Here's what he said to me. I hope he comes for me. Come on, somebody help me right now. I hope he comes for me. My son, when he has a child, he'll give, on the first year of his son, he'll give him a gun. Come on, everybody help me right now. It's just crazy. He said, I never thought about it. I want to let you know how many have asked Jesus' blood to cleanse you. Let me see your hands right now. Don't worry about judgment day. Because on the judgment day, there will only be the good things you've done. When you stand on that judgment day, and once again, I need to be honest, some of you will be a half second. Your reward day will just take a half second. They did this one thing. But all the things you've done wrong, how many have done some things you're ashamed of? Let me see your hands right now. How, 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 how? I saw this woman push her husband. You have. How, how many do not want a flick of some of your adventures? Let me see your hands right now. In God's sight, it didn't happen. You exchange all of your sin, your darkest moments, for his love through his blood. And the blood of Jesus, say nothing but the blood. Say that, nothing but the blood. Christianity isn't a philosophy. It's not a religion. It's a relationship with a Savior who died for you, and he will forgive you. I'm not against any other person, but I want, and none of them shed their blood. Jesus shed his blood. The Messiah shed his blood for me. Number one, redemption. I have redemption through the blood. I have forgiveness of sin because of the blood. I'm saved from error, from sin, from evil. The debt has been paid. It's the great exchange because of the blood of Jesus. Number two, I have fellowship with God. God is holy. 
is who he is. And you are estranged from God because of your sin, but the blood of Jesus, it opens the door to you have, for you to have fellowship with God, to talk with God. Not because you're at glad tidings, not because you read your Bible, only because of the blood of Jesus. You have fellowship with God. Hebrews 10, 19, boldness, fellowship, confidence comes because of the blood of Jesus. You don't come in your righteousness. You don't come because you memorize the scripture. I, a little child came up to me, Pastor, I, I, I know the whole Bible. I said, you do? Yeah, I, I, I'm in the class and we're memorizing scripture and I know the whole Bible. They quoted me a scripture. Jesus wept. I said, wow, you really know the Bible a lot more than some of my staff. You really do. But we have access to God, to walk with God and talk to God because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus opens up communication. The blood of Jesus. Some nations, you know, they close down all internet. Just close it down so there's no communication. I want to let you know, no demon in hell can stop you from talking to God. Hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing can shut you down. Someone say the precious blood. Say it. Come on, do it together. Clap together. Let's do it together. The precious blood of Jesus. You have redemption. You have fellowship with God. You have confidence to go to God because of the blood of Jesus. Let me give you the third thing. This is very interesting. The blood of Jesus brings healing. I, they're running out of terms for people to be nuts. I have people just announce it to me. Oh, I'm bipolar. I'm Tourette's. I'm a this. I'm a that. And they're walking around with these nut thought patterns of what they are. I've been diagnosed as this. I can't help it because of this. By Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes I am healed. He bore my spiritual torment, my mental distress, my worry, my care, my sorrow, my fear, my physical sickness, my disease. By his stripes we are healed. You know, I have a lot of times I've had little whistling sounds in my head. I have. I've had this little whistling sounds. It's called marriage. Why don't you just kill yourself? God didn't care about you. Your prayers don't work. You know, a long line of mental illness runs in your family. Your family original name from the nation you came from was Kukadama. And you begin to focus on, I am healed, I am healthy. You know, last summer I had the privilege of almost dying. I remember one night my body went into shock and for 40 minutes I had the complete shakes and I couldn't stop, I remember that. I didn't care. I'm healed. You know, people were well intending, but everybody had an opinion what I should do. One person handed me a cross and a mirror. But I knew God was going to heal me. I knew I not once, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die a slow... <gasps> I didn't do that. I just said, God's leading me. God is leading me. By his stripes, I am healed. He's bringing me to the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. I remember hearing the voice of the Lord. I, I went over to Bellingham. I said, and this guy had been a surgeon for three years. He told me he just went through divorce. He was really angry, really mad. I thought, hmm, probably not him. Really don't want him to be, I mean, my dumb ex-wife. And I just, I just had this thing in me. 
he'll maim you. I said, Lord, I, I know you're all knowing. Can I dialogue with you? I am dying, and I have nowhere else to go. The Lord said, I'll lead you somewhere. I'm going to heal you. I have not felt this good in 15 years. And I think I'm at the all-time best looking I've ever been in my life, personally. That's what I've heard. All-time best looking. I just wish we had more mirrors. I could just look at it. But in my spirit, I am healed. Inside of me, oh, I don't know. Beulah, would you be one of my pole bearers? She'd drop me. Oh, I got to call everybody. I, oh, feel sorry for me. Oh, my life. I, I came here with a good heart and I died here. It, I am healed in Jesus' name. Now, I am healthy in Jesus' name. I am good looking in Jesus' name. I, I am not done prophesying. I'm not done ministering. Hallelujah. By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. He bore my spiritual torment, my mental distress, my worry, my care, my sorrow, my fear, my physical pain and sickness, my disease. By his stripes I am healed. And this thought came into my head. It just came into my head. Bellevue has all the money of Seattle. Okay. And the doctors there have to be good. I went, okay, okay. I looked, and there was this Jewish lady. Someone say, yes, there is. I called, and I was on the clock. I could tell, you're going to live, you're going to die. You're going to live, you're going to die. You're live, going to die. You're live, going to die. Live, live, live. I called down there, and they said, oh, we're three weeks out to even see you. I go, okay. She called me the next day. Here's what she said. By stripes, I'm healed, by the way. She called me and said, can you come tomorrow? I said, yeah. Then I get there. Can you do this in two days? Yeah. Can we do the surgery in five days? Yes. Everything was perfect. Because by his stripes, say it, I'm healed. Hallelujah. I don't care how God heals me, I am healed. Hello, somebody say, I'm healed. The blood brings healing to your life. We are not against doctors. We just want the right one. And we don't want them to have a hangover. And we don't want them to go through a divorce when they're doing an operation on you. Somebody yell at me right now. Hallelujah. God led me, and God will leave you because by his stripes, because of the blood of Jesus, I am healed. Just say it out loud. This will be healthy for some of you. I'm a not a kook. Say it. I'm not a kook. I'm not a nut job. I'm not going to let some diagnosis of what everybody says I am determine my outcome. If you're bipolar, change it. Be tripolar and get back to normal. If you're a kook, you're not a kook. The blood of Jesus brings healing to our lives. Someone say amen. Someone say amen. The blood of Jesus. Look at the fourth thing that the blood of Jesus does. I love this. Authority over the devil. Huh? Authority... Over the devil. I, I like to know the devil. The, the D-E-V-I-L. The devil, the devil, the devil here, the devil there, everywhere, deb, deb. And we glorify the devil. The blood of Jesus gives me authority over the devil. Do I believe in devils? Absolutely. Do I chase devils? No. Do I listen to them? No. <laughs> Romans 16, 20. Crush Satan. He's under your feet. Crush it. No devils will have any say over my life. No demons will have any say over my life. No. Say with me. He's under my feet. Say in tune, some of you right now. Say, he's under my feet. I said, he's under my feet. Now I'm going to really hear, yeah. Oh, somebody did it right. Say, he's under my feet. I said, he's under my feet. He's under it. 
The devil not this and the devil that and the devil made me do it and the devil gave my family. No, you're under my feet. Romans 16, 20. Crush Satan under your feet. I want somebody to just help me out right now. Some of you need to loosen up a little bit. I need someone to stand up and I say, come on, somebody. Just put your foot down. Hallelujah. Don't look at your mate when you're doing this. Just put your foot down. Just, Hallelujah. Come on, say, I'm going to win. Come on, say, I'm going to win. Uh, I said, I'm going to win. Uh, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. This is under my feet. Hallelujah. Let me, if you get, go ahead and be seated. If you get in a fist fight, just in case. The most dangerous place to be in a fist fight is on the ground. Because the punches can hurt. But the stomping will kill you. You've got to get back up quickly. How many of you have been in some fights before? And you better roll out of that thing, baby, and get back to your feet because the stomp, stomp, stomp will crush you. It will break you. It will maim you. You're not under the enemy's control that you have authority over every demonic force in the name of Jesus. Revelations 12, 11, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. You can overcome today because of the blood of the Lamb. Nothing is held against you no matter what you've done. No matter how you behaved, you're under the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When God sees you, he doesn't see what you've done. He sees what his son has done for you by the blood. And you have a testimony. And you can overcome today. You have a testimony. How many have a testimony of what God's done for you? Let me see your hands right now. What God has done for you. Open your mouth and say, look what the Lord has done for me. Look what God has done for me. I shouldn't be here. I should be wiped out. I should be destroyed. But I've overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Beautiful. Let me give you number five. What the blood does. Protection. Protection, somebody. Israel was in covenant with God. And they broke covenant with God. Now they're under a curse. They were there for hundreds of years living under the tyranny of the Egyptians' gods. That's why all the plagues had to be addressed. And God beat every one of them. That's why. I won't get into it today. So now they're in a curse. They're cursed. They're slaves. They're treated less than human. And God said, if you put the blood on your doorpost on your house there is a judgment coming but I will pass over you because of the blood so they took a lamb of God a typology of Jesus and they put the blood on their doorpost they worshiped the same false gods they did the same evil things of everybody else but they put the blood on their doorpost the blood of Jesus on your life will cause no more curses. It's called the Passover for a reason. Jesus is our Passover. I am not cursed. I am under the blessing of God. Hallelujah. It declares in the word of God today, when I see the blood. They were under the control of the curses of Egypt, when the blood is on you, you're not under the control of the curses of your family. You're not under control of your heritage. You're not under the control of anything. You're under the blood of the Lamb of God and you're a child of the Most High God. I have to ask a very serious question today. Are you under the blood? Very serious question. Are you going to heaven? From a distance, maybe you have said, well, maybe this is right, but have you asked Jesus to forgive you and be under his blood? Have you said to Jesus, 
I need forgiveness. I need your blood to cleanse me of all my sin. And I'm not going to play today. We're going to close with Holy Communion, but I'm going to get real right now. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, I would be amiss not to give you that opportunity. If you're not sure you're forgiven, God wants you to be sure. If your sins haven't been forgiven, they need to be forgiven today. I am not going to do a funeral and embellish something. I'm not going to lie over your funeral. You can be a scoundrel. We have many members understand that. You can be a liar. How many of you have lied? Let me see your hands. How many lied? All right, let me get through. How many of you have driven over the speed limit, didn't get caught? Put your hand up right now. Hands everywhere. How many have hated? How many have been bitter? The blood covers us of all of that. Sin is an interesting word. It means missing what God has for you. The Greek mind would put a target up, and if you shot at it and you missed the bullseye, they'd say sin. I love the Hebrew. The Jewish people said you shot at the wrong target. Completely different. You didn't even aim at the right target. Every eye open, every head up. Look at me right now. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, you better make sure today. You can say to God, well, I went to church with my wife. In fact, I got it up to every other week. You can gossip about me. You can hate me. You can do crazy things. If you're under the blood, you're forgiven. Only the blood of Jesus forgive you. And today, you're not certain if you're going to heaven. You want to make certain today. You want Jesus to forgive you. You want him to be your Lord and Savior. And you want to make sure today. And you don't want to risk it. Stand your feet. Stand up and say, I need the blood of Jesus. I need Jesus to forgive me. I need Jesus. I don't need churchology. I don't need philosophy. I need Jesus. Precious blood of Jesus all through this place right now. Bow your heads and just repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Say it out loud, Lord Jesus. You are the Messiah, you are the King of kings, and you're the Lord of lords. You came to earth, you shed your blood for me. I confess I've sinned, and I need your forgiveness. I put my faith in you, Jesus. I ask you to be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be the King of my life. I confess Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I'm going to heaven because of the blood. I'm forgiven because of the blood. I'm not condemned because of the blood. I'm yours, Jesus. You recommitted your life or you prayed it for the first time. Put your heads up. I want to look you in the eyes. You're going to heaven. Now, I don't want anybody to die, live. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to heaven because of the blood of Jesus. Only because of the blood of Jesus. We join a church. That's a good thing. That's a good thing to join a church. You say, this is my home but it won't get you into heaven. Only the blood of Jesus. Well, today I brought you the truth. We need to hear about the precious blood of Jesus, don't we? How many are grateful that Jesus has forgiven you? We're going to have communion. I'm going to have the elders come and join me. Communion. If you've not been served a Communion cup, go ahead and be seated. If you've not been served a communion cup, put your hand up and usher will come to you quickly.
Jesus took the bread. He was with his disciples, whom he loved. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Jesus is broken for your pain, your hurt, your disappointments, and your betrayals. Jesus is broken. He shares in your suffering. I'm going to have Pastor Jody Ann pray over the bread today. Father, we're so grateful that no brokenness, no sickness, no hurt, no disappointment is stronger than your precious, precious sacrifice. Father, your body was broken so that we could be healed. You suffered so that we don't have to. And God, this morning we say we are so grateful. We thank you, Jesus, that your body was broken on our behalf. We recognize your incredible sacrifice for us, God. And corporately we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take up the bread. Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is my blood. It's a brand new covenant, a brand new start for you. The past is the past. And God just gives his future. Because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. No shame, no guilt, and no judgment because of the precious blood of Jesus. Robert and Cynthia are going to be elders shortly. Would you pray over the blood of Jesus? Lord, we just wanted to say that uh, we just give you so much thanks, Lord. Without the blood, Lord, we have no future. And because of the blood and because of you, Lord, we have a future, Lord. And we just give you thanks so much. Um, and we just pray this in your name. Amen. Let's take of the cup together. Why don't you stand to your feet? I think a hallelujah is worthy of our king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's a wonderful song, and you'll have to be flexible. Here I am to worship. Here I am to praise your name. Here I am, Jesus, all through the house, the glory of the Lord. Here I am to worship. Here I am to sing that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together.
the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's give the Lord a hand clap, everybody. Come on, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask it, every one of you. Obviously, we won't have service on Wednesday night. We're going every single night to rehearsals. We will not have services Wednesday night. If you decide to come, it is our parking lot across the street, so whatever. Hallelujah, whatever. But we're going to go after it. I'm going to ask you to pray for all the cast, all the people involved, a lot, a lot of people. It's going to be yes, love. If you come Wednesday night, we'll put you in a costume. <laughs> really good. We need a we need a few more demons. <laughs> we can smile. Everybody can smile. Hallelujah. Friday night and on Sunday. Now on Friday night, it's gonna go right to the play. On Friday night. It's gonna go right to the performance. On Sunday, we're still gonna have church. Uh, we're still going to have celebration in church. Hallelujah. Everybody, listen to me. Everybody bring somebody. They expect you to invite them on Easter. They think something's wrong with you. So just invite them. I always love the story of one of my dearest guys in the church. He brought his three ex-wives. No, it's the truth. And they all got saved. I met with them after the service, all three. I hate him still. All, th all three of them, but they all got saved. Hallelujah. They're all crying. Hallelujah. So bring somebody. How many are going to bring somebody? So bring somebody. All of us will bring somebody on Friday and on Sunday. Well, here's what it says. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. Yeah.